I want to start this talk by introducing you to my childhood friends, Benny, Mira, and Anna. We were all born in a small city in the south of Albania, Choravoda, blessed with extremely beautiful nature. And as you can see in the pictures, great opportunities for rafting, mountain hikes, but also just to stay a moment and enjoy breathtaking views. The four of us come from low and middle class families. Today we are at our 30s, but our lives look very different. Benny in general doesn't talk much, but he studied hard. He finished his bachelor's and master's degree, but currently he is working in a call center. And he is disappointed with how things have turned out for him. Working in a call center was the only job he could get, despite having a master's degree. Working in call centers, in bars, in restaurants is the only opportunity you could escape youth unemployment here in Albania, which, by the way, is high, up to 30%. Last time I met Benny, he was hoping to get the American green card lottery so he could go to the promised land, America. And in this way, he could pay back all the sacrifices of his parents. Next, Let's, let me introduce you to Mira. She is a very smart person. Bright, diligent young lady who made it through med school. The last two years, she has been doing the residency in the internal medicine department, and she is working crazy hours. But she is not being, any, she is not being paid any single money for it. During our student times, we used to organize many protests to improve the medical education here in Albania. We fought for better auditoriums, against outdated black and white printed textbooks, for more reading rooms. But most importantly, we made a call for radical change in the teaching system, which involved unmotivated professors, incapable of transmitting knowledge. Mira says nothing has changed since then. We used to fight, but people in our days are scared. And the only way you could succeed in life is either to contribute to the political party, because I'm not the son or the daughter of any chief of the department. She continues, I'm learning German and soon will move to Germany and work there as a medical doctor. And finally, Anna. She's an extroverted girl, as far as I remember but not that much of a school person. That's why she enrolled in a private university. And at the same time, she became a member of a political party and she engaged in two politics. A few days ago, I saw a post on Facebook where it was announced she was holding an important ministerial position in the government. And meantime, she is also lecturing in the university. Holy hell. She also owns a very beautiful apartment in the city center of Tirana at the age of 30, which for sure her parents didn't buy. These are the stories of my friends, but these are not isolated stories. Similar stories are shared by the youth here in Albania, but probably from many countries that are striving in these never-ending transitions. Having a university degree here in Albania doesn't help you much. In most of the cases, having a, a university degree does not guarantee you a better life. And mediocre people are more likely to succeed and hold important positions in our society. You think that war is the only way we can cause problems, raise pover poverty, insecurity, injustice, and force people to leave a country? We are not in a war here in Albania, and yet we are facing huge social and economic challenges. People are de desperate and hopeless about the future. Lowering the quality of education can also bring a country to its knees. Why is that? Why can't Benny find a job in the profession he studied for? Why can't be Albania the promised land? We have all the natural resources we need, right? Including oil and other resources, mountains, rivers, seas, lakes, beautiful nature, and the history we have lots to discover and share with the world. What's wrong with our health system? Why young medical doctors like Mira are massively leaving this country? 
To note, in the last two, three years, more than thousands of medical doctors and nurses have left this country to go to Germany. And why becoming a member of a political party rewards you better than education? Well, we can find the answers in the broken education system we have built, and I'm going to talk about the higher educational system. The level and performance of the Albanian professors in general is low and very bad. The career path to become a professor here in Albania is in general short and is little based on scientific output. The level of professors in Albania, in most of the cases, is equivalent to that of a master or a PhD student in the Western universities. And I did a research with my colleague Ariane where we found out that during the year 2008 to 2016, there were 1,371 titles given across professors and associated professors combined. We searched their names in the bibliographic databases in Web of Science and Scopus, and it was troublesome to find that only 42% of them had publications in peer-reviewed journals, so in journals that fulfill the international standards. We found out that majority of these professors would publish articles in the so-called pseudo-journals, so in journals that could publish everything for money. And you see these two beautiful ladies on the screen. These are my two grandmothers. One is 82 years old and the other one is 87. They have only elementary education, but according to the Albanian standards, today they can be called scientists. Do you agree with me? Well, I made a, a, an experiment. I wrote a paper with, uh, uh, with nonsense data, with fake data, putting their names as co-authors, and I submitted these papers in these pseudo-journals. Within 24 hours, the, papers, the paper was accepted. Whether aware or not of the standards of these journals, the Albanian professors published their articles there. We also found that 70% of professors and more than 80% of rectors of public and private universities don't have any publication as first authors in peer-reviewed journals. But also if we see at the National Academy of Science, which should bring the brightest mind of a nation together, the situation is the same. More than 85 to 90 percent don't have any documented research in peer-reviewed journals. It is tragic to mention, though, that some years ago, the academic titles were given by precedent orders, not based on peer review commissions or committees. Another interesting fact is that up to 60 percent of academic staffs in universities such as in the University of Medicine, which I know well because I studied there, have some familiar connection between them. 60% is that by chance? The head of universities, the chief of the departments, they fight smart people, they limit their opportunities, and they push them away from the institutions and even further from the countries. They see research and education as an opportunity, but not as an opportunity for society, but as an opportunity for their wife, for their son, for their daughter, for their wife to grow up in career, but also for their private business to shine. This is the current situation in the Albanian education system, in the higher education system. We have been told by professors who are outdated in knowledge and teaching skills, and they are not able to inspire students, but instead limiting their progress. For many years, Albanian universities have given students diploma, but without the, giving them the right knowledge and the right skills. And I'm sure that everyone now in the audience is asking, what are the causes and consequences of this broken educational system? First, we are not filtering the best people. The doctor helping your mother after stro stroke should be the best surgeon, not the one who got the position through, th through friends. The guy building the block of the apartments probably got his qualification thanks to someone he knows, rather than passing the surveyor exam. But for the parents that are here, consider the, child, the teacher of your child. 
Did he or she got the job or the qualification to do it on merit? But think back of Anna. She holds such an important policy decision position in our society, but she does not have the experience or the qualification to do it. How can she and other pseudo-experts or pseudo-academics serve as members, members of committees and commissions to make the right decisions for this society? They will not be able to speak on the name of the society, but for the interests of hands that feed them and sustain this system. They will make wrong and corrupted decisions. But also, it will, it, we are wasting money. But most importantly, we are wasting people's time. Think back of Benny. He studied five years, so he did some, uh, he studied for five years something totally unrelated to what he is working. The state could have, have provided him guidance and he could have used the time more efficiently and productively. Moreover, he has been told by professors who do not deserve such a privileged position in our society. They install fear and authority instead of nourishing the freedom of thought and creative thinking. And we are paying them from our tax money to be non-good professors. We are also wasting the potentials of young minds here in Albania. Let's get all Albanians together, three millions that live inside Albania. In the last 20, 30 years, they have not been able to produce even half of the knowledge on Albanian scientists abroad. This is what this graph is showing to you. There is so much available that Albanian scientists abroad are producing that you can't imagine. And they are not smarter than people living in Albania. The only difference is that they study and work in functional educational system. But also the lower levels of uh, universities and the professors and their research, their limited research capacities limit also our opportunity as a country to develop our economy and to support the government to make the right decisions. Nowadays, societies are shifting towards the so-called knowledge-based societies. Countries are not fighting anymore for resources, but they are fighting for work skills, intellectual property, and knowledge. They use research to define which is the best investment to develop our economy. They use research to define whether a policy is working or not, and what could be done to improve it further. Imagine the city where I was born, Cerovoda. Remember the photos of the beginning, but also I show you these photos of the mountain of Tomori. Great opportunity to develop tourism and maybe also agriculture, which could be the base of the, of the economy of the area. But the way how we see it now is as an opportunity to get marble blocks, but the, at the expense of destroying the nature and the mountain. Is there any research to show whether this approach is better than the first one or any other alternative? But let me ask you, are you worried about the quality of medications in Albania? Yes, right? Is there any research to test whether your concerns are legitimate or not? That's what the good universities and good professors do. They answer to the concerns of citizens and they try to find the truth. We need a revolution, you say. We have needed a reform for many years, and it's important now than ever. But how could the reform look like? It might look like valuing the real expert and build a system that is based on meritocracy and integrity in order to give the best people the best positions. It might mean having quality checks for professors and teaching skills to students so they can have a better life tomorrow. It might mean investing in research and building knowledge. In 2012, I left this country because I was as desperate as Benny and Mira for a better education. I was lucky to go to the top universities in the world and I found in myself potentials that I never thought I had. I left Albania with no idea what research was. And today, I count more than 60 scientific publications in peer-reviewed journals 
and in this way have contributed to the scientific world. Thanks to this experience, I learned the importance of research, of scientific research, which holds the potential to improve our society by giving us the tools to make evidence-based decisions so we can make this world a better place. And I'm sure that the Albanian youth holds a big, uncovered potential. And it certainly starts with shaking up the system. Have you heard them saying, we can't? We can't as individuals, we can't as a society. They are, not, they are speaking about their limits, not about my limits, not about your limits, not about ours as a society. There is so much fraud being told to you as truth. <laughs> Read more, challenge more, demand more. That's what we need to do as a society. We need to connect with each other, we need to get together and start stopping investing in this educational system that kills the potential, the willpower, the dreams and the future of young people. Investment in quality education and in research is the way to shape the values, skills, and knowledge that is required to formulate policies and foster sustainable growth and build stronger and fairer societies. The former President Barack Obama would say, if you think education is expensive, wait, wait and see how much ignorance costs. For many years we have been striving for many years, we have been striving in this never-ending transition, and we are tired for doing these small steps. Let's turn the wheel and make education, but the quality education, our opportunity. Thank you.